Okay, so now we've talked about pressure differences. Now we are ready to talk about wind. And when we think of wind, actually we think of it's the movement of air horizontally um, at basically the same elevation. That's when we think of wind. It's the movement of air. And why does air want to move? It's because it wants to relocate because it's going from a high pressure to a low pressure. Just kind of some important things about wind from a high to a low. In other words, H, high pressure to low, L. In other words, if you think of high pressure, and this is my parcel of air, I, I don't know if I'd call it necessarily parcel of air, I guess you could, but that's um, high pressure, low pressure, wants to head that way. Um, so what direction will wind blow? Well, one of the main ways to know or main indicators of what direction wind will blow is the direction of what we call the pressure gradient force. And up here, as I've drawn the high and as I've drawn the low, and I've drawn an arrow from the high to a low, that actually is what we call the pressure P gradient G force. So anytime you see the three letters pressure gradient force, they're talking about the, that difference in, in horizontal pressure, high and low, and basically an impetus from for things to move from high to low pressure. I shouldn't just say things, I should say air to move from high to low pressure, creating a wind. We'll also talk here in a little bit how the direction that the wind blows also can be affected um, depending upon a few variables. Um, the direction wind blows can also definitely be affected by the Coriolis force. And I'm gonna put CF for Coriolis force. We're going to talk about what the Coriolis force is, but just keep in mind spinning Earth. You know, it, it spins or rotates on its axis once every 24 hours, every day. That's what gives us our Coriolis force. And I'll give you some kind of hints on how it redirects uh, wind. The last thing we're going to talk about how wind can be um, redirected is um, abbreviated FF for frictional force. And if, I bet you already know about frictional force. For instance, if this is the way an object is moving, the direction object is moving, and we can just say it's moving because of the pressure gradient force, frictional force will work opposite it. FF. Makes things stop from moving, doesn't it? So um, we're going to, as we talk about pressures, um, surface pressures or pressures at a particular elevation, we're going to draw isobars. Um, and they're going to be connecting locations of the same pressure. And I think I'll skip today for this particular lecture going to the live view of, um, of these isobaric maps or these weather maps that have isobars drawn on them. But two of my favorite places to go is the Weather Channel, weather.com and intellicast.com. So when we look at a weather map that has isobars drawn on it, how closely those isobars, those locations of the same barometric pressure, how closely they are is called is an indication of what we call the pressure gradient. Um, so for instance, I'm going to give you a couple of different scenarios. Okay, we'll have some sort of central high or low. I think I'll put an L here. It's pretty small for me, so I bet it's really small for you. I'll put an L in the center here, and I'm going to draw these isobars pretty close together, okay, versus a lot of times central high pressures, when you look at their isobars, they'll look like a, like a bullseye too, but they'll be kind of blobbier, and there'll be a greater spacing to get to the next, um, the next change in uh, barometric pressure. So the spacing makes a difference, and it definitely changes from day to day, from location to location. Kind of as I've drawn these sort of bullseye looking things, these are kind of like weather systems that sometimes can move across, in our case, uh, from the west to the east. You'll see them kind of stick, stay as an entity for a little while sometimes, as they, like I said, come from our west and head east. So the more closely spaced the isobars, the steeper the pressure gradient. So we would say in this case, as I have a low in the central, this is what we have. We say this is a steep 
pressure gradient. And this is maybe, I guess you'd say, a not steep or a, um, a low, maybe low pressure gradient. There's a fair bit of spacing between the isobars. So the steeper the pressure gradient, it means that I don't have to move very far, literally horizontally, in order to get a change in pressure. So actually, those steep pressure gradients um, mean that you have a quick change in pressure, and that means that you're going to have a stronger pressure gradient force, and that translates to dun dun dun, a strong wind. So over here, and so start to kind of be looking at our, the surface maps with these isobars drawn on them. And next time we have a very windy day, look to see if you have this sort of situation with very tight, a very uh, tight isobars, very steep pressure gradient. And we would expect this to be have strong wind. In contrast, over here where we have a lot of space between the isobars, this is weak wind. Now just a little bit of a warning is that um, not always do is the change in isobars the same. Um, the, usually the isobars are written in terms of um, millibars and usually the spacing is four millibars. But if it's a really steep pressure gradient, what they'll do is go ahead and go, instead of four, they'll go eight millibars. And it's kind of a, it kind of masks how tight that pressure gradient is, how steep that pressure gradient is. So here's a couple figures from your textbook. And so I would call, here's our central low pressure, and we have a central high pressure over here. Um, notice that um, these isobars are drawn. The number here, like 996, that is the central um, isobar in terms of millibars. So 996 millibars is what the pressure is, the corrected or standardized pressure at all those locations. Then it goes, I mentioned the 4 millibars, then it goes from 996 to 1,000 millibars, to 1,004 millibars, to 1,008, 1,012, 1,016 millibars. So it is a difference of 4 millibars in, in each one of these cases. Okay, so can you see where it's a central low and it's building high? You know, And we'll talk more about why we ultimately get um, winds around a low will go counterclockwise, and I need to kind of talk about that. But just based upon what we've been talking about, you kind of feel like there should be what kind of converging air here, don't you? I mean, if, it's, if, if all that's driving wind to relocate is moving from a high to a low pressure, that's kind of what we got, and we'll talk more about that coming up. Um, but let's turn our attention to the um, central high pressure. So again, um, this, the units here are millibars, so 1,036 millibars pretty high. Uh, the next isobar is 1,032, then 1,028, so this is a difference of uh, 4 millibars each time. So we would expect that the, the, we have a tight, we have tight isobars here, and we have, I guess you could call them loose isobars here. So you would think that we would have uh, fast wind and not so fast wind here not fast wind. <laughs> now, um, we talked earlier about um, station models, and one of the things that we can do with station models is for these different locations where you see this little icon, one of the information that's been being given is specifically about wind. And the direction of the flag <coughs> shows you which way the wind is blowing, and the number of um, the number of little tails on the flag shows you how fast the wind is blowing. So if we just kind of compare, for instance, how fast this wind is blowing, to me that looks like uh, 61 to 66 miles per hour versus how fast this wind is blowing. Let's see, it looks like two flags there, you know, 21 to 25 miles per hour. So there you go. The closer the isobars, the stronger the wind. And here is a, another um, 
map from your textbook. Notice we have a central low kind of highlighted here. What's also drawn is kind of fun. We'll be talking more about these. These are weather fronts and the red uh, line with uh, semicircles is a warm front and the blue line with uh, triangles is a cold front. And lows are notorious for kind of being like almost like a kind of like a slow egg beater where it brings up warm air from the south and it brings down cold air from the north. So anyway, to kind of just highlight again what we've been talking about with regard to um, we have tighter isobars here. We have the spacing of the isobars are tight, relatively tight, um, close to the central low. And again, how fast is the wind blowing? Well, looks like we got, looks like this sort of situation. Oh, that's fast. 72 to 77 miles per hour. And then out here where it's looser, you know, how much is it, how fast is it blowing? Oh, about 15 to 20 miles per hour.